in chemistry and atomic physics, an electron shell, also called a principal energy level may be thought of as an orbit followed by electrons around an atom's nucleus. The closest shell to the nucleus is called the one shell, followed by the two shell, then the three shell, and so on farther and farther from the nucleus. The shells correspond with the principal quantum numbers or are labeled alphabetically with letters used in the X-ray notation. Each shell can contain only a fixed number of electrons, the first shell can hold up to two electrons, the second shell can hold up to eight electrons, the third shell can hold up to eighteen and so on. The general formula is that the nth shell can in principle hold up to two n2 electrons. Since electrons are electrically attracted to the nucleus, an atom's electrons will generally occupy outer shells only if the more inner shells have already been completely filled by other electrons. However, this is not a strict requirement, atoms may have two or even three incomplete outer shells. For an explanation of why electrons exist in these shells see electron configuration. The electrons in the outermost occupied shell determine the chemical properties of the atom. It is called the valence shell. Each shell consists of one or more subshells, and each subshell consists of one or more atomic orbitals. History The shell terminology comes from Arnold Sommerfeld's modification of the Bohr model. Sommerfeld retained Bohr's planetary model, but added mildly elliptical orbits to explain the fine spectroscopic structure of some elements. The multiple electrons with the same principal quantum number had close orbits that formed a shell of positive thickness instead of the infinitely thin circular orbit of Bohr's model. The existence of electron shells was first observed experimentally in Charles Barclay's and Henry Moseley's X-ray absorption studies. Barclay labeled them with the letters K, L, M, N, O, P, and Q. The origin of this terminology was alphabetic. A J series was also suspected, though later experiments indicated that the K absorption lines are produced by the innermost electrons. These letters were later found to correspond to the N values 1, 2, 3, etc. They are used in the spectroscopic Ziegbar notation. A physical chemist Gilbert Lewis was responsible for much of the early development of the theory of the participation of valence shell electrons in chemical bonding. Linus Pauling later generalized and extended the theory while applying insights from quantum mechanics. Shells The electron shells are labeled K, L, M, N, O, P, and Q. Or 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7. Going from innermost shell outwards. Electrons in outer shells have higher average energy and travel farther from the nucleus than those in inner shells. This makes them more important in determining how the atom reacts chemically and behaves as a conductor, because the pull of the atom's nucleus upon them is weaker and more easily broken. In this way, a given element's reactivity is highly dependent upon its electronic configuration. Subshells Each shell is composed of one or more subshells, which are themselves composed of atomic orbitals. For example, the first shell has one subshell, called one second. The second shell has two subshells, called 2s and 2p. The third shell has 3s, 3p, and 3d. The fourth shell has 4s, 4p, 4d and 4f. The fifth shell has 5s, 5p, 5d, and 5f and can theoretically hold more but the 5f subshell, although occupied in actinides, is not filled in any element occurring naturally. The various possible subshells are shown in the following table. The first column is the subshell label, a lowercase letter label for the type of subshell. For example, the fours subshell is a subshell of the fourth shell, with the type described in the first row. The second column is the azimuthal quantum number of the subshell. The precise definition involves quantum mechanics, but it is a number that characterizes the subshell. The third column is the maximum number of electrons that can be put into a subshell of that type. For example, the top row says that each S-type subshell can have at most two electrons in it. In each case the figure is four greater than the one above it. The fourth column says which shells have a subshell of that type. For example, looking at the top two rows, every shell has an S-subshell, 
while only the second shell and higher have a P subshell. The final column gives the historical origin of the labels S, P, D, and F. They come from early studies of atomic spectral lines. The other labels, namely G, H and I, are an alphabetic continuation following the last historically originated label of F. Although it is commonly stated that all the electrons in a shell have the same energy, this is an approximation. However, the electrons in one subshell do have exactly the same level of energy, with later subshells having more energy per electron than earlier ones. This effect is great enough that the energy ranges associated with shells can overlap. Number of electrons in each shell, each subshell is constrained to hold four or plus two electrons at most, namely, each S subshell holds at most two electrons, each P subshell holds at most six electrons, each D subshell holds at most ten electrons, each F subshell holds at most fourteen electrons, each G subshell holds at most eighteen electrons, therefore, the K shell, which contains only an S subshell, can hold up to two electrons. The L shell, which contains an S and a P, can hold up to 2 plus 6 equals 8 electrons, and so forth. That's why NTH shell can hold up to 2 N2 electrons. Although that formula gives the maximum in principle, in fact that maximum is only achieved for the first four shells. No known element has more than 32 electrons in any one shell. This is because the subshells are filled according to the off bow principle. The first elements to have more than 32 electrons in one shell would belong to the G block of period 8 to the periodic table. These elements would have some electrons in their 5G subshell and thus have more than 32 electrons in the O shell. Valence shells The valence shell is the outermost shell of an atom. It is usually said that the electrons in this shell make up its valence electrons, that is, the electrons that determine how the atom behaves in chemical reactions. Just as atoms with complete valence shells are the most chemically non-reactive, those with only one electron in their valence shells or just missing one electron from having a complete shell are the most reactive. However, this is a simplification of the truth. The electrons that determine how an atom reacts chemically are those that travel farthest from the nucleus, that is, those with the highest energy. For the transition elements, the partially filled energy level is very close in energy to the NS level and hence the D electrons in transition metals behave as valence electrons although they are not in the so-called valence shell. List of elements with electrons per shell The list below gives the elements arranged by increasing atomic number and shows the number of electrons per shell. At a glance, one can see that subsets of the list show obvious patterns. In particular, the seven elements before a noble gas higher than helium have the number of electrons in the valence shell in arithmetic progression. Sorting the table by chemical group shows additional patterns, especially with respect to the last two outermost shells. The list below is primarily consistent with the off bow principle. However, there are a number of exceptions to the rule. For example palladium has no electrons in the fifth shell and like other atoms with lower atomic number. Some entries in the table are uncertain, when experimental data is unavailable, see also, periodic table, electron counting, 18 electron rule, core charge, references.